Hey guys, Alex the Vegan Gamer, and we're starting Chapter 5, The Lost Holy Grounds. Alright, let's go ahead. <laughs> Snapshot The Crescent in Sunrise Valleys Ooh This should be cool Where the hell am I? I'd better have got frequent flyer miles for that flight Always have a look behind to see if there's a Hit an object somewhere. And I don't think there is. Alright, let's go get this book. Okay, you guys, I'm not gonna read it right now, even though I really feel like reading it. I'm gonna wait till the next save point. Spooky place. Are they gonna be alive? Nope. Sonic rings. Halos. Whoa. Someone needs to build these a little better. <laughs> How come did they break the second I'm walking? It's not as if... I don't know, it's not as if... There's an earthquake or anything or a monster around. Whoa. Oh, that's cool. It didn't entirely crumble. I was looking around to see if there's a hidden section somewhere. <laughs> Have her dance. Pure platinum, hooray! I don't like the way she jumps. Oh no, I don't like this. She's supposed to glide at the end. Training ground ruins. Ooh, there's gonna be a monster here. Get an object anywhere? Oh. There's a powerful barrier here. But something on the other side is giving me a strange sense of deja vu. That she's already been here. Yeah, okay. Spooky place, you guys! Spooky place! There's two of them? Grace and glory, sick and sphere with monsters. Whoa! How cool is that? <laughs> Whoa, that was super awesome! Whoa, that was easy. 
Did I just gain a weapon? What's that around me? Whoa, I just got claws! And the music CD. Gold, I only got gold. I deserve way more than that. I deserve at least... I deserve pure platinum. <laughs> Sinut and DK448. Okay. Uh, I don't know much about music. I'm not sure I said that correctly. Oh well. Trying out the new claws. Alright. Monster time. Why am I on this side? Well, I should have dodged it. Well then. <laughs> yeah, I probably should be using my guns here. I'm not too sure how to use this new weapon. That boss fight went better than this fight. Huh. I'm not uh, gonna be able to see what's behind the uh, gate there. Or will I? Is there something here? Hey! Ah, oh, not an invisible wall. I really dislike in games when there's invisible walls, and it's not that obvious. So I always have a feeling sometimes that there's like hidden objects that I can't see. Is that a bullet? Huh. Lipstick. Lipstick. Nothing. Damn. What the? <laughs> a girl without lipstick, but lipstick without a girl. Most curious, isn't it, Cheshire? What's also most curious is how a child like you has kept afloat in this town. The name is Luca! Then don't you think it's a little strange to be worried about my well-being? Sure, the Festival of Resurrection is peak security. The thing only happens once every 500 years, can you blame them? Besides, when you look as good as I do, security isn't a problem. But a killer like you, on the other hand, I'm sure you found a way. That little girl. I've seen her somewhere. That's probably herself. Hey, don't go freaking out on me. We both know you came here for something. But what you don't know is the closer you get, the harder it's gonna be for you to get away from me and what you've done. He's sure confident. You have to fess up to it all. <laughs> I can't wait for you to get your hands on whatever it is you're after. Let me guess. You want a cut? Well, 
If you're still alive by then, perhaps you can appeal to my generosity. Still alive? You may be standing right in front of me, but you're definitely not living in reality. Which is a shame, because the truth is always going to be the truth. All I see when I look at you, the real you, is the truth. The truth is, you killed my father. I don't care who believes me. They can't reject the truth. The truth will set me free from your black stain on my life. The truth will allow me to expose you to the world. Then, I'll have won. And I'll do it without stooping to your level. Because I'm not a heartless witch like you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you gonna do? Kill me in plain sight? Go ahead. It would only prove everything I've said about you. Well, that and sadden the hearts of a number of young ladies. Claire, and Trish, and Sylvia, and Amy. Oh, you don't want to piss her off, let me tell you. Hell hath no fury. What? <laughs> She had to save his life in a very sexual way, but I guess that's the that's the uh, way the game goes. All right, fearless. I'm gonna go back with my sword again. Oh. Alright! Adios, monster! Give me my rings. My halos. Where did the guy go? What's his name? Lucas? Disappeared on me? Alright. Try to slip in. Whoops. Wow. Oh. Okay. I guess I tried it on uh, an invisible monster. -y. <laughs> no. Uh, let's jump there. Silver. Yeah, it wasn't that good. Alright you guys, I just found another book, and there's gonna be a puzzle, so I will read both books, and I'm gonna save right here, so don't forget you guys to save the animals, kick some monsters butt, and stick around if you want me to read the books for you out loud, and I'll see you in the next video. Alright, whoops, wrong button. Let's continue, and let's go right here. So it's probably an Antonio's notebook. So let's learn about Crescent and Sunrise Valleys. As overseers of history, 
the Lumen Sages and Umbra Witches were both incredibly powerful, each fearing each other and strictly prohibiting interrelations as a way to maintain the balance of power. Upon the annual occasion of a total solar eclipse, once the selected elders and each clans were allowed to meet with the other group to conduct negotiations, I suppose that each clan, drawing their power from the sun and the moon respectively, must have held the eclipse as the most special of celestial phenomena. The two clans inor inexorably linked but opposed, like positive and negative, solidified this relationship in their interconnected mountain hideaways, the witch's sanctuary of Crescent Valley and the sage's sacred sunrise valley. Located in an inaccessible and treacherous regions, region, these areas were lined with countless rows of stone monuments dedicated to each clan's death, dead and large statues depicting a witch and sage stood at the center of the shared area, demarcating the border between each clan's territory. Each statue has its back turned to the other, and their visage as though reflecting any human instruction, intrusion, <laughs> stir intense feelings of discomfort within one's soul. Atop these statues, the clans met for their yearly consort, giving this place a mysterious but interesting ambience. These valleys were not just filled with memorial tombs, they were also home to training facilities in the light and dark arts, held as sacred ground by both clans. Today, the statue of the Umbra Witch is a truly gruesome sight as a giant spear has pierced the woman's chest. It is if it was shoved through the statue during witch's age of persecution would have required unspeakable power from the Lumen Sage who carried out the act. It's probably gonna be the monster in this area, I would think. Alright, let's read this one. Heavenly Manipulators the Umber Witch's sacred crescent valley is said to contain enormous relics harkening back to the valley's place as a training ground in the witch's supernatural magic arts. The long bridge that snakes between the cavernous ravines of the valley, stone circles hinting at celestial principles, training chambers where death was wagered in hopes of polishing one's skills in life, all of these are depicted in the tattered records I have obtained. I know not if they ever truly existed. However, the magnificent appearance of the witch statue in the distance seems to indicate that the legends passed down through history are in fact real. Amongst these numerous artifacts, the most mysterious are those known as heavenly manipulators. What are those, I wonder? I have already described how the Umber Witches drew their powers from the darkness and the Lumen Sages from the light. However, I have not mentioned how these powers were at their greatest during full moon or at the peak of the sun's ascent. Ascent? I guess when the sun is noon? I would think that's what it means. The two groups created the heavenly manipulators to affect the movement of the moon and the sun, and these devices played a role in the clan's most important of ceremonial rites. If stories are to be believed, the clans could affect even the ways of the cosmos at will. The powers of the witch and sage were not common knowledge, although as overseers of history, one could imagine that they must have appropriately appropriately <laughs> powerful abilities making their ultimate destruction an even more ironic end wow well we are gonna see it soon i guess i'm gonna have to try and solve this puzzle in the next video all right you guys see you all later